What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. Hoops and scoops, poops and scoops. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow, that is not. Uh, that was not the word that I thought was going to come out. But I went scoops twice. <laughs> oh mercy! Oh, oh that's that, a that was an all-time bottom, bad one. Yeah, bottom, it was bottom fiver. Yeah. Oh, but oh, thank you. I <laughs> thank you. If you think that that was the fifth worst and not the worst one, well, the one to be fair, the the worst one is still a bottom fiver. So it could be. Yeah, it's right. definitely in contention. If but, we're if but, we're drafting the worst, it would be drafted I'm, highly. I'm saying to not just automatically go bottom three. <laughs> because did you think something better was going to happen? Uh, yeah, scoops. Yep, yep. scoops. scoops. I, scoops. I, I, there was Poops scoops. <laughs> there, there uh. was there was going to be a theme by the end, but the, yeah, there but, was. But the words they did not happen. <laughs> well, there you go. Welcome in to the Spitballers. Hopefully, you're still with us. Would you rather? <laughs> nope. Is this real life? And we are drafting today as usual. And um, Al Borland in the building. What's up, Spitwads? Now, I believe I am quoting him when he says he feels like he has a small child in his belly. Did we have a big lunch today? We Ow. did. Oh, yeah. man. We had some mott sticks yeah. on the table that got me. Mott <laughs> sticks are something I did, uh, and I, you could, neither of you guys attended, but I, I formally retired from that world. What, from mozzarella? Right? What? Yeah, yeah. What due, an idiot. Due to the the ramifications that Al is now experiencing, I did have to have a formal. I invited the family. I guess it was mostly family that was there, but I did retire formally from mozzarella sticks. That's and it's not something I wanted to do. That's incredible because they're delicious, but they are. You pay sticks. the price, man. You do. Uh, I'm currently with twins <laughs> <laughs> as well, so my my tum tum. I mean, maybe that explains what happened at the beginning of the show. Oh, Mozzarella yeah. sticks. Maybe that's why you used <laughs> poops in the in the scat. Could Jason, be. you have not retired from mozzarella sticks. I'm I'm considering uh, a very late retirement. Uh, I'm I'm thinking maybe in my 80s I will okay. step away. Thank you. Oh, Thank you're you. one of those pros that like they had their prime, but then they hang on just yeah. for a bite here or there. I like to think of myself more as a hard worker, as someone that just. Loves to work. I'm not going to retire early. Locker I'm not going to give this up. I'm going to I'm going to go until my dying day eating mozzarella sticks. Have Good. you had mozzarella sticks? That's they why are, they are one of the best things. Mozzarella in, sticks in the world of food sounds like okay. That we know what that is. It's good, but when you actually just break it down, you go, "It's fried cheese, yeah. bro. It's yeah, yeah. just deep fried there cheese." There can be. I've had bad mozzarella sticks where. It certainly was not worth the exchange. Like a really good one, maybe you're willing to be with with child, but um, I don't know. I've had some bad ones and they were delicious. Still great, right? Like <laughs> yeah. uh, bad for a yeah. mozzarella stick, where but. it's like it, when they're real crumbly, like in the and the the breadcrumbs are just falling off. It's it's not that you're melty. That's good. No, no, oh. that's that's when they're bad. But they're still yeah, they're still pretty they're good. Still it's still great. deep fried cheese. There's nothing quite like when you get older though. You do you, if you want to exchange your comfort later for the deliciousness now yeah. i have had those times when i have made the exchange and i'm like man this is not that good and i you know what i mean like oh, you yeah, want it yeah, to be yeah. really really good if you're going to eat the calories or eat the the bad thing and then you're like man this is like a mediocre bad thing so mozzarella sticks just aren't your jam. no a really really good one i could come out of retirement for <laughs> yeah but it, it, the fact that he's saying that there are bad ones yeah, yeah he doesn't i guess get that it. Uh, that's that's true i don't <laughs> you get don't it. get it man you, you don't understand <laughs> mod sticks like we do i am pregnant right now <laughs> all right we're moving on would you rather he doesn't get it <laughs> All right. Would you rather You're question old, from man. Samantha on the website? Would you rather have the U.S. switch over to the metric system or switch over to driving on the left side of the road? Oh, I mean, okay. Would you rather us do something smart or do something stupid? That's how I read this question. Well, I, why? Why is left side of the road stupid? Yeah, it's because we drive on the right. <laughs> That's but why. we also use the, uh, I believe, imperial system. Yeah, but the the system we use in the U.S. for measurement is objectively it's awful, idiotic. Yeah, it but makes, you know it. Well, we know it. If because I told we're you that your alphabet 
was idiotic because we could logically say it was, you still have spent your life learning the alphabet in the certain order that it was in. And I don't want to go figure out how many kilometers an hour is normal. I know miles. It will just take you a day. A yeah. day it will not just take out. you a day. I think you could make the, the move to metric very quick. The idea of driving that gets that gets rid of inches on the other yeah, side. I like, of I like the road. inches, man. There, there's no like muscle memory to measurement. You know you what I mean? Like you you measure something and you look at the you look at the ruler or you look at the device and you say, okay, it is this much. Even even it's miles so per easy hour. To, I mean, they don't make you do a test when you go overseas to drive. You just figure it out. Yeah, you'll learn but, the, you'll but, learn the driving in in a day. But part of the driving is also figuring out how to. Manage your speeds. I mean, no, you don't have to do both. If you switch over to the left side of the road, you're still going miles per hour. No, yeah. I'm, no, I'm saying like to your to your point of when you go overseas, you don't have to take a driver's test, but you're you're still dealing with metric. Yeah, you still have to do the kilometer. Yeah, math, which is no problem. And when you have those like, cars, the the meter is in kilometers. Yeah, yeah, so you're literally just looking down and looking at the speed limit. Correct. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Yeah, but I'm saying like of like how. I don't know. I, just, I think it's a really easy transition, and we have one, 12 inches is a foot. Then we have 36 inches as a yard. Not an easy transition. Not it's, an easy one. Oh, yeah. It, no, it's so easy. 10. Yeah. 100. 1,000. Yeah. Okay, how big is that wall in, in metric? When we notice that's a 10-foot wall. Yeah, we're, but our not, estimations. Not, I, don't I don't know what it is. No, off the top of my head, but give me a week. I, I disagree. And, I vote formally for the I'd rather drive on the other side of the road. Oh, man. I will. I've never been in an accident, and I will be in so many. Uh, I, I will. For, I'll just. I'm going to make the wrong decision. I'm going to go down the road the wrong way. I'm going to turn, and I'm going to be on a one way road the wrong way. Good. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. I think you just asked yeah. me to die. No, I mean, you, you have autopilot. You, you take care of. Uh, maybe. Yeah, that that, that seems. Hasn't like that been your Hasn't I that don't. been your thing? You're almost always but, an autopilot. Yeah, but usually just straight, not for turns. And it's fair. Uh, but you're not a beta user. One. No, they watch my cell phone usage way too close when you uh, touch that button. One way roads are, I think those are just confusing on in general. Like when we go downtown, because he was saying if, if he has well, to drive. One way road is the only road where it doesn't matter which country you're in. <laughs> No, but I'm saying that I don't care if I drive on the left or not. When if you get into a situation where there's just one ways everywhere, it's always confusing. Yeah, it's frustrating. My my point is, I would come up to a, an intersection. I feel like I would just naturally turn right, and now I'm in oncoming traffic. So you're not planning on driving if you ever go overseas, not renting a vehicle because um, you're going to kill yourself. Yeah, I think I'll use public transportation for the most part. All right, and Al, you are firmly on my side, right? Correct. Yeah, so it's it's fifty fifty. Uh, the now, spitwads are gonna have to let us know which side they're on. Just to be clear, we're not we're we're saying everyone drives on the left, or is it just I have to drive on the left while everyone continues to be driving? We're on gonna the right? go with everyone. Here. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Otherwise, you're Cause, walking. Because <laughs> if that's the case, then I have to uh, not take that one. Uh, Justin from the website: Would you rather live in a home you built yourself using nothing <laughs> but your skills in YouTube? But you are given unlimited funds, or would you buy the home that you live in, but stick to a max of two hundred thousand dollars? So you're saying I, it, it's a good question because I, I, you get you, to build. Okay, explain it to you me. You get to build as big of a house, five million dollars, as mansion. robust of a house. You get all the materials, but you got to build it, and it's you and you two, or you just get a two hundred thousand dollar house. Okay, we're saying. That's I, it. That's the. I am the only one who can provide labor for this house. Correct. You, Mike, right. This house, your hands will build this house. This house will never be built, ever. How long would it take? What? How long would it take a skilled person who actually knows carpentry and masonry and they know how to work with metals? How long would it take one person to build a two thousand square foot house? A, a talented person? Yes. By themselves? Yes. It would take years. six months. <laughs> no way. Six months? Yeah. They can't build a regular house with multiple crews in six months. Well, I mean, you'd be working a little bit around the clock here. <laughs> this is your house. You need <laughs> to get into it. Normal built, like a new construction house, 
is like eight to 12 months. And that's with so many people. Yeah, yeah but they're building multiples at one time. They're not focusing on that so- single house. I think six months is the, I'm going to stick with it. I There's no way. The idea of You could me, frame a house in how long? I mean, how, how long could you frame a house? With multiple people no, real I'm, fast. I'm talking to the man. <laughs> uh, I don't know, a couple weeks. A couple weeks. Um, you're almost done. I mean, obviously, size you're almost of the done. house makes a big difference. If you're, it's a mansion, it's going to take Laying that foundation by yourself, that is not going to be a, a good time. But here's what I'll I know. I'll be skipping the foundation. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just right into the dirt. Mm-hmm. So if you told me to build a house, okay, a home, uh-huh. a, a, and it was four walls, okay, just a box with a roof that kind of goes up at a – you know, at a point like roofs do. Well, there's flat roofs. Now, this one is a point like okay. roofs do. You just want to do an A-frame. Okay. I just want an A-frame, as yeah. they call it. <laughs> if I were given a million dollars to succeed <laughs> in this project, I don't yeah. know if I could do it. I mean, if I did it, there's not going to be a door on that thing. There's not going to be a window. It's going to be... <laughs> Like, I, like you just to finish, you have to be on the inside of the house or the outside. You, I mean, <laughs> you're, you're getting... just staying wherever your last piece was put in place. I right. feel like it could build, um, you know, walls and walls and a roof. And you got YouTube. YouTube's very helpful. You can build a lot of sure. stuff with that. If you're not factoring in time, I'd like it to be my project. I'd like the unlimited resources. I think with enough time, I'd be happier with that house. The thing is, is that 200k. I mean. Maybe you, get In this economy? Little, maybe you can get yourself a little townhome. You got about a thousand square feet probably for that amount of money where we're from. If you told me I get a studio apartment <laughs> or <laughs> an infinite money build your own house, I'm going to go with the one that doesn't kill me, which is the studio apartment. This house has fallen down upon me if it is built with my hands and knowledge and YouTube knowledge. I think you underestimate yourself. I think you could do two things, Jason. I, I think, think you could you drive. Overestimate I think you yourself. could drive on the other side of the road without dying, and I think you could build a house with enough time. That's very, very kind. Look, I know I can land a plane, okay, <laughs> but building a room not happening. I mean, you're not even like. I did start to think. You about have to be the one who goes to gets all the permits. You got to know exi- know how to do all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I that's think also we're gonna, something I'm skipping. I think we're going to skip that. <laughs> I yeah, am, I'm skipping I'm with, that. I'm with Andy on this. <laughs> And to be clear, there won't be like... That's how we know the house is coming down. There's no plumbing. I'm pooping, oh, peeing outhouse? outside. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm just talking getting the walls The how, walls that get up. How do humans connect to sewers? How do we, uh, like... There's, in this case, I'd say utilities are brought to the, the site for you. Okay, so you're but just I'm, connecting into I'm it. actually curious. <laughs> like A uh, pipe. So they they build, they just... Is there like one pipe yeah. to every house that goes down, or does it go into like a center in the neighborhood? All goes to this spot, then that connects I to the sewer. It, I imagine if it's a sewer, every house just connects right to the sewer at the front. Of so your if you're yard. in the sewer, just like every couple hundred feet, there's like a little yeah, poop yeah. chute. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> wow. This is incredible work we've done, humanity. And that's where the Ninja Turtles live in the sewer. Yeah. Hmm. Eating pizza with. Maybe I need to. Get the Pizza and uh, poop. Yeah. Maybe I need to get the house, buy the house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike from the website, would you rather have to use a porta potty? Oh, here we oh, go. That's ironic. With a bidet in your backyard or use the toilets in your house with a one ply toilet paper? So you got to go outside, do a porta potty, but it's very nice, or you got a one ply in the house. Oh, man. So this is really, I feel like a, a question near and dear to my heart yeah i hate one ply and it's i near and dear to something I, I hate going without my bidet but the smell of an outhouse you know one of the reasons i like a bidet a nice warmed seat a nice time you know it takes it'll be it takes warm a yeah there. you'll have a nice warm seat so, for most of the year yeah it takes uh, uh, a little bit Scalding. more time when you use a bidet because you wash you dry it's an experience. Uh, yeah, and it's it's like going to the little the day spa. Um, when the you, bidet the, spa. The bidet <laughs> spa. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> and I don't think I want extra time in the outhouse. <laughs> I don't want to be in this 115-degree box of poop smell. Like, uh, that. 
you can't have. You notice how often Jason's been going to the bidet spa lately? Yes, I have. Have, yeah. have you? Yeah, it's gone up. Yeah, it, yeah he's he's, he's bought a new him. he bought a new membership, <laughs> and he gets unlimited <laughs> visits. I've never can't stop me from having a good time. I've never <laughs> real. I mean, something. You are in the middle of some kind of game lately. You, you've heard him. He does. He did not retire from what the level mozzarella of sticks. What blitz are you on? <laughs> uh the problem to me is not the bidet or the one ply. The problem to me is going outside. There is yeah. that. I when I get up at one in the morning to pee because I'm almost forty, and that's a thing now. I don't want to go outside. Oh, you're just and cross the weather of whatever's going on. If it's just a number one, you're opening a window. <laughs> you're just, just just like I'm not going out. I'm not walking to an outhouse to make a number one. Yeah. I'm finding the quickest route out of my house, and then that's how it's happening. I feel like my wife would. She'll never know. Yeah, go to a different room. <laughs> crack the window. I guess I could use a sink. Yes. Ooh. Sure. I, I've i definitely yeah, or a never tub. done that before. Or a tub or the shower. I Whatever, don't, man. Wherever there's a drain. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. Because it's gross. <laughs> but the idea of peeing in a sink is it's, anathema. It is <laughs> It is the most foul, unbelievable there's thing. There's nothing wrong with no. it. Is it's, what someone told me. <laughs> Look, here's the thing: is it's all going to the same place. Like all the your we did we did get a picture here, Jay. I don't know if you saw it. Of Owl gave you the what happens to how you get Ooh, connect to the sewer. Let me go see. All pipes lead to the sewer. I mean, or to the ocean, as as Finding Nemo would tell us. But it's it, all the water that goes down a drain in your house is going to the same place. And while I think the idea of urine going in, in your sink i understand mentally you're like "Ooh, that's off-putting think how nasty your hands are i mean you're you're washing them with soap but your hands are just think, how, think how nasty raw chicken is that you go throw into your sink or, yeah. or anything like that like so you're going kitchen sink <laughs> oh i've i've i'm going kitchen sink <laughs> that's what i just learned it's it's a it's a big big sink you want that disposal yeah. running <laughs> oh no Oh, now you got oh, both no. problems oh, fixed. No, we're not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling okay. You're telling me that in the middle of a of a rain. Okay, here, Jason. There's a hailstorm out. Yeah, it's blowing seventy miles an hour. There's a hailstorm. Porta potties across the yard. Yeah, you're telling me that disposal doesn't look a little more attractive. <laughs> oh, there's no way I'm oh, going to that no. porta potty. Oh, no, no way. You got to go somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll where, where are you going? Under the porch? I think in under a the porch. In a box? <laughs> under the porch. And look, if you're telling me there's 70 mile an hour winds, I want to see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and just, I mean, I will be going, you know, away from me. With the wind? With the wind. <laughs> oh, my gross. <laughs> but I just want to see what I can do. <laughs> oh, no. No, you don't. No. No one does. Uh, um, I no, think you're a liar. You can't have, we cannot go back to porta potties. Yeah, I mean, this was life, right? The outhouse. Yeah, it's just what the way it was, and we liked it. I um, don't. I don't think they liked it. Well, yeah. I think they went. Is there a better think, way to do this? Think of one. what the what invention hasn't been made yet. That one day you'll be like, I can't believe we didn't have that. Yeah, I mean, at one point in time, the outhouse was a great invention. That's right. That was a huge upgrade to bucket in the corner or hole you have to dig every time. There was was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build myself a bathroom. I'm going to give myself privacy. I'm going to have the ability to just keep going in there. And, and it was, I'll bet, I'll bet they spent their time in that place. Yeah. And now, yeah, I mean, now we're, we uh, still do like a version people. of it, like a septic system. I mean, all your stuff is not going to main sewer, right? It's just going out and under the yard and just, it's just yeah, doing its, it's thing out there. It's, it's just hanging out. Yeah. And just being, being poop. Just, <laughs> Just Stupid. being poop in the world. Uh, uh, George from Patreon, would you rather have crickets loudly chirp every time you say something you think is fun? <laughs> do we have that for for us here? Uh, no, we, do we don't. Have that I can get it. Um, so crickets loudly chirping every time you say something you think is funny. Or a tuba. There right, it is. Or a tuba loudly play every time you are walking after a meal. Mm, I... I think we have used, tuba sounds too. I could have used that one today. Now, <laughs> the mozzarella walk. Yes, it. W when you say something that you think is funny, 
and it doesn't get a reaction that it's unfortunate and it feels bad. Now, would this also be, I mean, you're, you're, you're also then kind of telling on yourself because it's just something you think is funny and then the crickets go off. So like you could be saying something that no one thinks is a joke and you're just like, yeah, I thought that was real funny. And then the crickets get you. Yeah, it would it would be bad to have a public proclamation of every time you think what you said that's, was that's funny. That's exactly what because, I'm saying. Because uh, then they'll know that you thought it was funny because they might not laugh. Right now, if I say something funny and you don't laugh, I just yeah, you're st- I just I, quiet yeah. and I'm like, I thought they were gonna laugh at that. No, but, you said that I wasn't a joke. That was a statement. Yeah, but one, that would give it away. One of the problems here with this is our occupation. I mean, I, this would just completely ruin our podcast <laughs> it's Compl- just, all, just all, the entire show would just be just you couldn't hear us anymore because there's so many crickets yeah because uh we're being funny uh, at least we think we are that's what the yes. statement can we is. get the yeah let, we look just how funny th- we are we just think we yeah exactly and now oh, we man, gotta try to talk the, oh, yeah it does ruin the this mood is, that's not good i I'm got a tuba. the tuba and the tuba is pretty funny i think i it would is. like it the tuba is like that guy ate that guy eats <laughs> that guy eats yeah um when that i'm walking down the st- when i'm walking down the street <laughs> i want the tuba player <laughs> right behind me and i'm gonna do a tuba walk which i would imagine is i bend my knees pretty deep and kind of kick my leg out each on each tuba walk on each tuba yeah. walk yeah i think so <laughs> um i will go with the tuba Mike. yeah what is your final What's answer the tuba uh, do we have time for one more hour, or should we move on? Let's move on. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Ibotta. It's football season, so that means a pizza, wings, eh, maybe even some buffalo chicken dip. Whatever you prefer at your tailgate, go all out and get cash back on every purchase with Ibotta. The average Ibotta user earns $100 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Or you could use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to go to, or the fancy dinner that you've been craving. Other apps give you the points. that They just don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers, too, when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Download the Ibotta app and use code BALLERS to start earning real cash back. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code BALLERS. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code BALLERS. Is this real life? All right, we are jumping into Is This Real Life, where we share with one another a story from the actual headlines and say to ourselves, man, is this real life? I I can go first because mine's mine's not like, mine's not funny. Mine's just a a, a feel-good story of someone being heroic. Oh, okay. Which is always, it's always fun to hear about. So in Michigan, there was a, a school bus driver taking the the kiddos home and they start feeling bad you know start getting dizzy start feeling like uh oh it's like something's wrong so they radio in something's wrong with me i'm going to i'm going to pull the bus over doing all the right stuff that they can do yeah as they're going to pull the bus over they pass out <sighs> this is a school bus driver and then Seventh grader Dylan Reeves. Oh, <laughs> yeah. baby. Five rows back, throws his backpack off, and he goes and he stops the bus like a boss. Wow. Like, Let it, me save these children. <laughs> imagine, like, try to think back to your- The wherewithal. The, your headspace as a seventh grader, and you're just on the bus with your friends, Pure panic would break out when you notice that this bus is out of control. That's uh, a runaway bus. And and then someone in the seventh grade is like, no, I, I've – stay in your seats, everybody. I've trained I, for this. I have got this. And they go and they stop the bus. No one gets hurt. Like, this is – This is why I let my seven-year-old drive my car. This is an incredible <laughs> – uh, honestly, then the, the parents talked about it and they said, well, he's – we've done, you know, like some – safe driving of just like having him in the lap 
Letting him drive golf oh, really? cars. So he was trained golf a little club, bit. Golf clubs, golf carts. Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah. I mean, that wow. worked out. So that, I mean, that's an incredible story. It's even better to think that the seven year old was going seventh grader. Oh, seventh grader. Seventh grader. Seventh, not a, I'm not sorry. a seven year old. And but but they thought to themselves, I I kind of know what I'm doing. Yeah, seventh grader would be twelve or 12, thirteen, 12, somewhere yeah. around there. Well, um, just, well, to look, just take control of the, of the of the scenario, and they were able to successfully amazing. stop this bus. That is incredible. See, that story would have been also little. I would have laughed more if he was like, the seventh grader took over and he crashed the and bus, <laughs> drove it off a cliff. Um, Jason. Everyone's safe. Yeah. So, well, here's the thing. My story is pretty similar. Oh, Florida siblings, ages ten and eleven. Stopped while driving mom's car <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on freeway oh, no. 200 miles from home. What? Two, that was better than 200 miles an hour where I thought you were going. Two, but 200 miles from home? That's So where we live, we could go to Coachella. That's 200 miles away. Dude, I mean, that's... So they got that's good the most, drivers. That was incredible. Right? They're incredible children. That's what? That, I There's mean, one that's, running the pedals, one running the... <laughs> Run, run in the a steering ten wheel? Year, I have a 10-year-old. I have a 10-year-old. The idea of my 10-year-old f- even functionally being able to drive seems impossible. Yeah, how does impossible. that even work? This 10-year-old has Stilts? to be. Stilts? Well, and it was the 10-year-old that was the driver. The younger sibling brother was the driver. But the story gets better. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, this car was pulled over because it had been uh, reported earlier that day by the mother that her vehicle had been stolen mm-hmm. okay and her children were missing what a terrifying oh yeah of moment. course of course the police found this vehicle and came up guns a blazing guns out expecting oh, that they it was were, a, it was a, th- it was a, a stolen this was car an kidnapper alert. and they found him and came and and it was, and they, much to their surprise, a ten-year-old driver got out of the car, two hundred miles away from home. Were they running away? But it gets better. No, <laughs> they were running away. The brother was driving his sister to California. This was what he was doing. <laughs> Keep in mind, this article starts Florida siblings. Flor- are, they, are they going to Hollywood? <laughs> They're going to California. Maybe go to another city. I feel like this should be a movie. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be. Um, but uh, here is what it said: the children told deputies that the girl had been upset that her mother had taken away her electronic devices for misbehaving, <laughs> so they drove to California. That's Unbelievable! It. After investigation, I'll show you, mom. They got uh, unlimited use in California. Yeah, after uh, <laughs> being interviewed by detectives, they said there was no indication that the children had been mistreated in any way, shape, or form. This was children who had their electronics taken away, who who stole their car, and went 200 successful miles away, which is incredible. Yeah. Wow. And they could have been driving this bus. The end of the article says, the mother declined to press charges against her oh, children. Oh, that's... That is great that's news. That's great. What a nice... That's great. You're uh, going uh, to straight to jail. Also, uh, the daughter will never have electronics again. <laughs> oh, yeah. that That's... <laughs> or, I you, mean... You thought a one-week banishment was bad? This is gone. Yeah. Curse flesh. Uh, and oh, yeah, you, you're Amish. Yeah. <laughs> that's... You, you now... You, you yeah. are... Raise that barn. My story oh, my is my favorite one I've ever had. Oh, oh fantastic. nice! In fact, I I uh, I found this one uh, back in early August. Sent it over to Al. Told him to remind me about it because it just you want to talk about a bad day. You want to talk about the worst day you could have when no you think good, you're very just bad day. you're just minding your own business. You're just mowing your lawn out in front of your house. Here's the headline, and then we'll get into the details because it just seems unbelievable. Texas woman injured after hawk drops snake onto her. (laughs) It is unbelievable. She's mowing her lawn. She's 64 years old, mowing her lawn, minding her own business. A hawk, which had captured a snake, 
<laughs> was flying overhead. Whoops, dropped the snake. The snake landed on the woman's arm, immediately started striking her in the face. What? <laughs> It gets oh, better. Oh, oh mercy. So the hawk has it, to come back. The, it wrapped around her arm and started striking her in the face. Oh, my gosh. At which point the hawk wanted to retrieve. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Wanted to retrieve its dinner. So the hawk then comes straight out of the sky and um, <laughs> she says, as I was trying to sling my arm and sling the snake off, the snake wrapped around my arm. It was striking me in the face. It struck my glasses a couple times. I was slinging and slinging, and he was striking and striking and just kept hanging on. Then she said, then the hawk appeared just as fast as the snake appeared. The hawk grabbed the snake that was wrapped around my arm and pulled on it like it was going to carry it away. And when he did, he flung my arm up, and the hawk was carrying my arm and the snake with it. The hawk struggled to remove the snake from Mrs. Jones's body, stabbing her with its talons oh, oh, repeatedly while attempting to snatch back its food. Did it get it? Eventually, the snake was pulled from her arm, leaving her startled husband to drive her to the hospital. Puncture wounds, cuts, abrasions, scratches, severe bruising, face attacked by a snake. Goodness. Arm attacked by a hawk. I mean, you talk about a bad day. She describes the attack as, quote, severely traumatic. <laughs> adding she thought she was going to die. She will never mow yeah. the yard again. That teaches a valuable lesson. That's Can right. you imagine? I mean, the, the aunt of, I don't know, just having a snake dropped on you is one in a bazillion. But the fact the hawk, she was attacked by a snake and a hawk out of nowhere. It's in the middle you're of just, weeks. You're just mowing your lawn. Ah, snake <laughs> on my arm. It's biting me. Ah, hawk. And, no, it's just <laughs> clawing me. That's and, insane. And undoubtedly, based on this story, she probably had asked her husband to mow the lawn, and he had said no because she was doing it herself. Wow. So and he's who, like, that's why yeah, I don't yeah, see, mow the lawn, see, Doris. Who was, who was right? So, yeah, that story was incredible. All right, moving on. The Spitballers Draft. I wonder if that's one of those stories no one would believe you. Oh, for sure. You're like, nope. Your how, did you, you're, how did you get these scars? Yeah, your <laughs> husband is uh, beating you, huh? Let me tell you. Hey, that would A uh, snake dropped out of the sky and, <laughs> and a hawk attacked me at the same time. Oh, if she had died from it? Oh. I know, I know, but Jason. But she didn't. If right, right, she right. had passed from the damages. The husband's going to jail for murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. The husband's, there's no way he's the, not going to jail. Because the hawk is taking that snake away from her dead body yeah. and, and having dinner. And then she's just left there having been attacked. Yeah. So there you go. All right. We are drafting the best sports. All right. It is a broad. And, you know, we got the Olympics coming up. We do. A lot of sports in the Olympics. There are. They're called the Olympic sports. And you've got all the ones that you like playing, all the ones you like watching. There's a lot of ways you could go. Mm -hmm. There are so many different ways that I could go with the first pick. <laughs> but it's football. So uh -huh. yeah. well, we, we will now be moving on. <laughs> football. That would be uh, F-U-T-B-O-L? American football. Oh, okay. NFL. Yes. Let's, it's not sure. football. It's NFL. NFL. That's okay. American really football. Um, yeah. Yeah, this was the first time – in the history of spitballers that I was really hoping I was the scat because the one-on-one is football, but now it gets interesting. Now it gets interesting. Um, I'm going to go with my childhood sport. It was life. It was everything. I still absolutely adore it. I love it. Someday the Phoenix Suns will get a championship. That will be when I'm 83 years old, but the national basketball association Basketball is a great sport. Basketball, you can argue, in my opinion, is better than football just as a sport. You can play it in your front yard easily. You can get a pickup game easily. Uh, it's it's widely available uh, to, to be participated in. I love everything about basketball. It's also a very fun, uh, you know, uh, you know, a uh, high pace sport, fun to watch. And I prefer sports where you score about 100 <laughs> rather than sports where you score three. You get a lot more games than you do in football, for sure. Um, it's a good pick. It's a good pick. Uh, 
I'm trying to figure out which direction I want to go here because I I think I can save one of these picks for my last pick. Oh, oh yeah. I dare you. Oh, yeah, try it. I dare you. Try it on. But then I feel like I disrespect the sport by saving it for my last pick, but I know I know a sport both of you are, are stupid and don't like. Mm. Oh, yeah. You can get it I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take it here. Yeah, you can get it later. I'm not going to I'm not going to take it here cuz if you take it, then you are I mean you're you're like a scab. Maybe you've crossed the picket line. Yeah, you've crossed the line and you are and I would enjoy right. that. So, uh the first one I will go with is the sport that is taking the world by storm and everybody <laughs> oh, I wasn't in, sure how high it would go. Everybody I, I, in this entire <laughs> building plays it all the time. I almost it, took it with my last pick. I really did. I'm taking pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. Of course is the pick I am going to select. And um, pickleball is a, a wonderful game. No sport growing faster. And then I'm going to take, actually, soccer. I'm going to take uh, the, the sport of the world, which I do appreciate and like. When I was a young kid, it didn't get a lot of coverage in America until the FIFA game started coming out and MLS started getting more popular. But then you start watching Olympic soccer and you start watching, um, you know, more and more coverage and uh look i'm gonna i'm gonna take the most popular sport in the world i'm gonna take soccer all right i don't blame you there i don't blame you i think that's uh i think that's fun that probably would have made my list a pickleball was certainly the one that i hoped came back to me that's what i wanted i had the dream of starting out with the combination of basketball and pickleball is the only way to fight against football but my fight is over yes but i will keep on fighting with mixed martial Arts, uh, MMA. I've been yep. a long time fan. It would have been was watching my next them. pick. Uh, I figured that was that was going to be your pick. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I I I think that sport's grown tremendously. I you know I started watching that when it was old school, barely regulated nonsense. He and wants the people to know he's an OG. Yeah, I'm an OG. Are we talking I, like we're talking no one weight, no weight class, no weight class, one boxing glove, one free hand, just like throw everything spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks. Okay. And so. to answer the question, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that was what <laughs> stuck. <laughs> well, I mean, you the, it was started. Like, the whole MMA was started. Yeah, the Gracies. Well, uh, as a way to show the world that our jiu-jitsu is, is the superior fighting uh, technique. And, and they, Yeah, they were very right. They, they were very smart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mike, you've got two selections. I, do I need to take them? Because I feel like I could just put football in the polls. Yeah, and no, you we don't, can, you can. Well, maybe with our off. audience, but I mean, I think you need to build this team out. All right, um, man, I I really expected that MMA was going to come back to me. Um, so going through the list, I will take it, Andy, and I am not a scab because I wow. have I have enjoyed baseball wow. at many different parts of my life. I had a, a a portion of my life where I would literally, I was I would go to sports bars. Just so I could watch the Minnesota Twins play baseball and Johan okay. Santana, I'll um, give you credit. I playoff baseball is still a a top tier sporting event to watch. The problem there's just too much baseball. That is the problem, and they will never fix it. And so it will continue to be a great sport that is also really boring at times. But it, when baseball is great, it's it's fantastic. I like I do like it. And then I am going to take. Hmm. And I was I was trying to very much intentionally get baseball later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, but Mike, at least I, I know I've, we've talked about baseball before. Yeah. He joined the bandwagon of haters. Oh, I'm I'm on both sides. Yeah. Oh, it's it's well a good done. place. It's a good place to be. The fence. I, I You're was, on the fence. Yes, I was really happy when you took baseball because you feel like I you would have had to. Take I would it. never have let it get back to Andy. <laughs> There's just no chance I would have let him get his precious baseball. And I don't want it. So this is great news, Mike. And I'm taking golf. Oh, <laughs> no. That was my pick. <laughs> That's a great I'm, pick. I'm taking golf. It Golf isn't something that, like, well, there's there's the two parts of it. There's playing it, which is, it's impossible. I've, I've, <laughs> I don't know how people actually get good at golf because I've invested a lot of hours and a lot of private lessons, and I can, actually, I can hit a ball sometimes. So it's it's pretty amazing when people actually get good at it. But, but playing it is is great. Just being in the outdoors with buddies, you know, just having a good time. A good uh, time. I'm not at the part where like I expect myself to be good. I imagine that's when golf gets super frustrating when you think you should be better but you're not. And then 
enjoying it on TV is it's not like any of the other sports. It's it's strange. It's just kind of like a a relaxing background thing that you have on. It's Sunday. You got chores around the house that you got to do. You check in every once in a while. See guys, you know, guys and gals playing in really nice weather and and just beautiful scenery. So it's 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 a unique sport. That's but I what do makes like it, golf. That's what makes it special is that regardless of the frustration, you can go and enjoy a day outside, walk the course, drive the course, teach your kid to drive the golf cart. The golf yeah, cart. which we should have all like, be doing apparently. I've got great memories. It wasn't about playing golf well, but just going out with my dad on the course and enjoying a day. Yeah, I, I often say I hate golf um, because, one, I think it's really boring to watch, and, two, I just can't get – decent at it i mean i think you've, tr you've tried harder than me to get good i at it. i try i've never had lessons but like i i had a summer where it was like yeah I'm, I'm i'm gonna golf and we went out and golfed a lot and you know every seventh or eighth hit you're like ah, i'm getting it i'm getting it. and every ninth or tenth hit later you're like what in the world <laughs> my body doesn't do what i'm asking it to do <laughs> that being said I, I agree with andy like i have had really fun times golfing it is actually a it's a good time to go yes. out and, and, oh, and golf. I enjoy it. That was what I wanted my next pick to be. So I'm a little sad that you took it. I, I, I'll trade you for MMA. Um, no. Okay. I'm going to keep my fighting in-house. And I'm going to stay with fighting. I'm going to get rid of most of the mixed martial arts. And I'm keeping boxing okay so, you're going boxing i'm going boxing people, uh, people still into that huh it's i was gonna i was that's exactly where i was gonna go how are the 1920s treating you it's honestly it blows my on, mind mike. yeah who are the who are the big superstar boxers right now mike tyson <laughs> no vander holyfield oh, look I, you I, don't have to know him to, to like this I, no I, I my point was gonna be it's a youtuber that's, right, yeah. That's who the big boxing star is. Yeah, that's true. I had one of the Pauls. It I is a dying. It's a dying sport. It is. But but because so, MMA is so much better. Here's what's crazy. I agree. MMA is better. I drafted it first. Um, yeah, people aren't interested in it. What in it blows anymore. my mind? I can't even comprehend it. Is how boxers make more money. Boxers like when you're a champion boxer, right. You make more money right now than you do in MMA. The 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 gates are larger. Like who's watching? Are they unionized the, over there? No, I don't I, know. I can tell you who's watching it. Everybody's great uncle. <laughs> right. The it, uncles, was, it was huge. Uncles love boxing. Yeah. It was huge. <laughs> but I, you know, uh, that's another one with great memories. Like I remember when Mike Tyson was in the heyday. Every time he had a fight, you would be going to a party. Really? You guys it, did boxing parties? Oh gosh, yeah. We don't I mean, need. We we just don't have enough ear biters anymore. There's yeah, not enough we need, drama. Need need more. That's uh, why the YouTubers at the tippy top. Yeah, the drama. Is, because it's drama. Okay. You either want to see them beat up somebody or be beaten up. So all right, I'm, look, I've got a very you aggressive. Go. Uh, you very do. Aggressive. I've got MMA and boxing to go along with my <clears throat> basketball. basketball. Yeah, I will so take. I'm gonna dunk it. I will take the last remaining major sport in America, uh -huh. which I am a huge fan of. I, I think it's one of the top sports to go to a game of. Boxing was drafted before it. Hockey. <laughs> I'm taking ice hockey. I mean, good, good Jason. No, I, I now I commend the pick. Yeah, because you have taken just a, a, you've taken the sport that you have enjoyed, and. You have dunked yeah. on hockey. I don't want baseball. I don't want hockey in my life. I got, I got, I got time for two majors, and that's basketball. That's and football. the funny thing about a lot of these sports is that, and I think it goes for soccer. I think it would go for baseball and for ice hockey. Is if you sat down, being competitive people like you both are, and you decided today I'm going to become a huge fan of hockey, it would happen overnight. You'd know everybody. You'd love the sport. Hockey. We're in Arizona. You would think that it's not big. You would be right. It's not big down here, but I love it. Ice hockey, playoff hockey, attending hockey games is outstanding. Playing hockey. I, I had a good two-year run uh, growing up where I played a lot of – Roller hockey? A lot of roller hockey, like to the point of buying was, the gloves, buying the sticks. Was buying this all the, uh, yeah. right around the Mighty Ducks time? You know, they didn't hurt. It probably <laughs> – was. It, it wasn't just the Mighty Ducks. It was the fact that the Mighty Ducks transitioned into a – uh, Anaheim Mighty Ducks franchise for, uh, for Disney. Now, Al, you were nodding. Did you play some roller hockey? Yeah, yeah, yeah I played a lot right around the Mighty Ducks time. Yeah, yeah the, it was be because the Mighty Ducks and the the popularity explosion of rollerblades. Like 
I feel like it hit at almost the exact same time. And not everyone has ice around them, but uh, but if you don't have ice, you got a street you can ride on. All right, and then for my final pick, I'm going to go a little bit uh, a little bit different. I'm going to go to uh, an accessibility type of thing. You don't have to be tremendously skilled from the time you were born to play this sport. You can do it in your own backyard, in your garage. You can do it with friends. It's You can do it at the office. It's ping pong. Oh, come oh, on. I'm <laughs> taking ping pong with the fourth pick because it's a true love. I love the, the game of ping pong. In fact, I'm buying another table right now, and um, – I love it. I have a lot of good memories playing. You guys are ping pong. very, How very good. How dare table. you call it table tennis? Because I believe it's called table tennis. Yeah, that's the name of the sport. It's ping pong. I mean, I get it. It's t table tennis is ping pong. Yeah, ping pong is table tennis. That's fine. But I changed it. <laughs> I think to table tennis <laughs> to ping pong. Oh, okay. All right. But yeah, you guys are very good players. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we certainly were once upon a time. We used to play. You could get back all there. the time. I'm sure we could. Don't come I, over and play. I would love to. All right, best out of a hundred. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was definitely going to be my next pick here. <laughs> so I need to find another combat sport to go on my list of sports. Actually, I'm going. You to just like fighting. I just love it. Um, I I do, I do really enjoy uh, fights. Like, I, if I were to draft another one, it would be uh, Muay Thai. I I really like uh, sure. kickboxing tournaments. I've watched them a lot. But I'm going to go with um, an Olympic sport. I'm going to go, you know, the Olympics are coming. Okay. And I'm going to go with what I think is, of all the Olympic sports, summer and winter, there's one to me that's it's your like, favorite? It is my favorite. Oh, I know what it is. Write it down. Because okay. I think I'll surprise you. I've watched it the most. Um, I think it is interesting and varied. It doesn't get boring. They hop around a lot. It is gymnastics i was really? way off i went with swimming i thought he was gonna go swimming uh, Michael swimming is so boring to me you just watch yeah you watch people swim <laughs> yes you just watch people swim but so in you gymnastics, like the fact that in gymnastics there's different events yeah it's like you got the dancing routine you got the you don't like the different strokes in swimming that doesn't do it for you it does, no, they're, they're it, so far away you can't even tell you're you're looking at 12 people from like a helicopter view gymnastics is a great pick gymnastics is something that uh it was right on the edge. If I had not gone ping pong, that would have been. I oh, I was I had two things written down. Yeah. Gymnastics and ping pong. Yep. And it, it, like every sport, you get into the nuance of it, it starts to get even more interesting. That's the the problem with swimming is I bet if I actually worked on the different strokes, like I would understand it more. But it, but it's all just the same stuff. Like I'm not educated. It where I can watch gymnastics and go, oh, now that like there's a lot of skill happening right here. That's but funny because when I watch gymnastics, I do notice skill. But if you told me to watch three people perform the floor exercise, oh, you, and they all do it flawlessly, some expert would be like, "That person's like ten times yes, better," and I'd be like, "I can't tell the difference." I agree with, but that, it's a good but, Olympic sport, and, and and you know, swimming at least you get the down to the clock. That's why I like swimming. Like okay. there are some gymnastic routines that are much more noticeable, like the the balance beam. That one, you could see people do crazy stuff on that and be like, that is a insane human being. Or what's the uh, the pommel horse? Oh, what those they, are fun. Those are, you're like, ah, they landed. That's how I know they did good. Right, If yeah. they landed or didn't land. Yep, <laughs> exactly. You are an expert. Yeah, all right. Uh, so that leaves Jason with basketball, MMA, boxing, and gymnastics. I have pickleball, soccer, hockey, and ping pong. Mike, you have American football, baseball, golf. All right, there are in my travels – uh, across the world, there I have come across. Oh, I know what you're gonna do. Uh, well, I'm the. There's two sports that I legitimately, really, really wish would catch on here because they are awesome. And the one of them is much larger, larger in the globe, and I, that's the one I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with rugby. Oh, that's what I thought you were gonna go. Okay, with. so it, it, rugby is, <laughs> dude. Rugby is so freaking awesome. There's there's pretty much pretty much no exposure to it over here, um, but it's it is very much like NFL football except much faster pace because you like things don't stop, but you get big hits, you get technique, you get you get good. I mean, not forward passing, but you get uh, you know the back passing, and then of course all the kicking and things. But it's just 
the humans that are playing rugby, these are these are super athletes. Do they just draft the army straight out of the rugby leagues? Because that's they, what I would do. They really should. Because these these are thick boys that are just they're looking at the quads of a rugby player. I mean, it's like the, it's the it's my waist. One of their thighs is about the size of my waist. But it is it is such an incredible sport. And so I'll just so that's my draft. The other one that it's it's Australian football. So Aussie rules football. If you ever get a chance to try and I figure thought out, that was rugby. Oh no. No, they are very very different. Auss, uh, uh Aussie football is almost all kicking. And so imagine so imagine it's, it's like passing in the NFL except you're kicking it. Hmm. And then people leaping like and there's no helmets. No, there's no helmets. And there's people leaping four feet into the air, very frequently leaping and getting your knees onto someone's back. So then you are like you're boosting yourself off of your opponent to catch a ball that's 12 feet in the air. It is an awesome sport. Hmm. All right. So rugby. And it's very, very popular. Not here. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's a bigger world sport. I wish it would catch on here. Close contention. Uh, honorable mentions for me were skiing and snowboarding okay in I have, terms of the olympic uh, i have skateboarding events. skateboarding there you go uh I'll, like, another like thing that's impossible in in terms of olympic events i really like speed skating those guys go really? so fast yeah speed skating it's it's insane it is interesting um don't we have a summer olympics coming up right here this summer what where do you guys stand do on the know. racing debate the race car oh, i think people a, will be mad at us for not yeah. taking for, that okay, i didn't i didn't want to but pander. it's not a sport so uh <laughs> right. no, I'm just, yeah i'm baby. just kidding i'm just kidding. I, ping pong a, is a sport yeah i didn't want to pander so i didn't draft like f1 or anything but nascar the, but the the people f1 is far more interesting to me than nascar is just because of different courses yeah okay. and, and it's uh, i'm i'm not dunking on nascar i think there is when you get down to the 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 intricacies of how it actually works and how you get good at it i think it could be interesting then but like i sat down to watch whatever that f1 show was you didn't like on, it on netflix i just it, it wasn't it didn't grab me right away and i really i really wanted it to could we have i uh, really wanted to get into f1 yeah that show got really popular and got people yeah. into it i mean vegas is like vegas is <laughs> has completely rebuilt all their streets and they're like shutting down really popular sites because they got to get the road ready for the big race. Do you think one of us could have snuck esports in there? Ooh, I I think because of the word sports, we might have allowed it as a sport, but it is not a sport. It's so not. I, why is it not a sport? Because there's no physical activity involved. There's no strenuous physical exertion. Like even in ping pong. Is, yeah, it would be a question. You, is chess a sport? Yeah. Right. I don't think chess is a sport. No. I think it can be. No, I don't think so. Wait, so, it, well, well, okay, well. <laughs> it's for esports, I bet you can go and measure, like I, I bet if you if you strapped like blood pressure and heart rate stuff onto people playing esports, you're gonna see, you're you're gonna see an increase of activity that that you would see in other sports as well. I would there, not go ahead, Jay. There are two leftover ones that are that are important. I think to bring up one near and dear to my heart: competitive eating. That's awesome. <laughs> Shout out to Joey Chestnut, king among men. Uh -huh. And who's um, the second place guy? And then Kobe uh, Kobayashi. Um, That's the only two. Yeah, yeah, those are the two. He doesn't do that anymore. No, he doesn't do it anymore. But the I actually have a regret. There is a, a sport, if I could go back in time and draft over gymnastics, I would absolutely draft this over gymnastics because I think it might even be more fun to watch than gymnastics, and it is Way more fun to play. It's a f super fun sport to play. It's volleyball. Volleyball is a blast. Uh, if if you get out there, you know, you're Scott out on Sterling. a beach. Scott Sterling. <laughs> the definition of a sport is an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which individuals compete. I guess by definition, they are qualifying the word sports by throwing the E in front of it. So they are kind of creating a new category yeah. when you say esports because you're not. Otherwise, it would just be called sports. So you're calling it esports by because it's not a sport. Because it's not a sport. Not a not a techno not a regular sport. Yeah, it's it it's tough. It's like it's a really fuzzy cuz it's like golf. I know you're using your whole body, but like you're not getting winded when you're playing golf. You can get like you'll have sore muscles like your your back can get really sore and everything, but it's, you're not Yeah, it's not it's not a sport. 
<laughs> Golf's not a sport. <laughs> no, golf is. Oh, no, okay. that's what I'm saying. That's... But yeah, golf is a sport because huh? you're using your is physical activity, and you have to like train. And Tiger Woods has been hurt 25 times. If you can't pull your hamstring, it ain't a sport. Oh, that's okay. my let's, new rule. Let's test that theory. Yeah. Can you pull your hamstring in racing? No, not a sport. Agreed. Yeah, you can. 100% you can. Pull your hamstring? Sure huh. you can. Yeah, they're, they're, Getting in the car? No, the G-force. I mean, you're like having to hit the pedal down and, and tense up all the time. You can absolutely do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, you're saying you can absolutely do that like it's like it's a truth. Has, yeah. Do I've you, gone, do you I've believe go, someone listen. in the history of racing has actually <laughs> yes, pulled their hamstring? Yes, 100%. And, and I'm on it. And here's the thing. I've gone out and done like the uh, like competitive racing. Um, uh, what are the... Go-karts. Go -karts. Like competitive go-karts. You do about 20 times around a track in a go-kart, whole body sore the next day. Whole body sore. I did a quick search, and the first one I found was a was a NASCAR driver who tore his hamstring. Uh, but I read the article; he, he tore it playing basketball. Right, uh, exactly. <laughs> I thought you were going to say in a crash. Exactly. There's, but, uh, there's, I, it, it, when you're done with a, a a NASCAR event, you I'm sure are really sore. I like I'm not joking. What did we learn today? Uh, I learned that you should start training your kids how to drive at about five, just in case they need to help out. Uh, and take over a vehicle. I learned that Mike kind of respects baseball. He took it at number two. And I learned that Andy uh -oh. is stuck with the Imperial system and will not. Andy and Al. Me and Al, we like our inches. That's right. Inches and inches. Just inexact measurements. That's that is what you're it. all about. Yeah. Thank you, know you for what? tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.